Brandon was a happy, upbeat four-year-old child. His mother rarely left him out of her sight. It was only natural for her to take him to Disneyland to play like the other children. It was supposed to be ultra safe, but that day Disneyland, and not for the first time, was a place of horror rather than joy. The spinning Roger Rabbit ride was simply irresistible and the favorite among little children. His mother bought the ticket and waited for their turn. Brandon simply could not wait to get into the ride's taxi cab, which is designed to fit two. His mother sat next to him. The safety bars were supposed to be operational, and off they went into the rabbit hole. A minute later, all hell broke loose, and for Brandon and his family, a nightmare began. Disneyland is by all means a breathtaking, massive theme park in Anaheim, California. It opened in 1955. It was the first theme park opened by the Walt Disney Company, and the only one designed and constructed under the direct supervision of the iconic legend Walt Disney. Walt Disney initially envisioned building a tourist attraction adjacent to his studios in Burbank to entertain fans who wished to visit. However, he soon felt that the proposed site was too small. So he bought a 160-acre site near Anaheim in 1953. Construction of the theme park soon began in 1954 and later opened on July 17, 1955. Since then, it has been entertaining the masses from around the world. It also underwent expansions and several major renovations, including the addition of New Orleans Square in 1966, Bear Country in 1972, Mickey's Toontown in 1993, and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in 2019. Additionally, Disney California Adventure Park opened in 2001 on the site of Disneyland's original parking lot. Accidents do happen, and Disneyland is no exception. Nevertheless, most accidents that involve rides in theme parks are preventable, since they are always caused either due to a manufacturer flaw, poor maintenance, human error, or a combination of the two or more of these mechanical and human flaws. One would expect that a massive and rich theme park such as Disneyland would be safer than others. Nevertheless, for many, including Brandon Zucker, that was not the case. Disneyland has been visited by more people than any other theme park in the world. To date, nearly 800 million people have visited it since it opened in 1955. It was so majestic and cool, it was the source of inspiration for the founding of the magnificent Magic Kingdom theme park. The Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin, which crippled poor Brandon Zucker for eight years, is a dark ride based on the Steven Spielberg and Robert Zemeckis feature film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? This awesome ride is located in Disneyland's Mickey's Toontown section. It was opened on January 26, 1994, a year after the Mickey's Toontown area opened. It proved to be a massive hit with children since its inception. In December 2021, the Disneyland version was updated to include a new plot element of Jessica Rabbit in the role of a detective who is determined to stop a crime wave in Toontown. Everything was going just fine as Brandon and his mother smiled and laughed in excitement while riding in Roger Rabbit's car. But something happened. Brandon's safety lap bar was too loose and he fell from the spinning car. According to witnesses, the four-year-old was sitting closest to the car's open side next to his mother who was behind the wheel. The black safety lap bar was lowered and he was supposed to be secure in his place. But it seemed that Brandon dropped something when he reached down to pick it up, he fell out of the ride and was pinned underneath the car. He was strapped underneath it for a whole 10 minutes before paramedics pried him out. The scene was simply unbearable because the spin car rolled over him, folding his tiny body in half. The paramedics were horrified as they scrambled to bring the breathless child back to life as his mother watched in horror. His vital signs were so weak they thought he was a lost cause but they kept trying until he breathed again. He was swiftly taken to the hospital. His vital signs were still too weak, but the doctors did not spare a minute or two and soon succeeded with repeated resuscitative efforts and his vital signs improved. However, his injuries were too many and simply terrifying. 
He had a left diaphragmatic tear, a collapsed left lung, a small tear to the liver and the spleen, and a left-sided pelvic fracture. They had to keep him in intensive care for many days in an induced coma. Although he would later occasionally smile and laugh, he never talked or walked again, for the damage to his brain was just too severe. Soon he was moved to a long-term care facility, but in December of the same year, he was returned to UC Irvine Medical Center because of complications that included swelling of the brain. For the next eight years, Brandon's life was hard. His injuries were just too severe, and at the age of 13, he passed away after a long battle. The accident did not go unnoticed by the authorities, and a new law was swiftly passed to further regulate amusement parks. The accident even marked the first major investigation conducted by the California State Division of Occupational Safety and Health under a law regulating amusement parks. That new law required parks to report serious injuries and accidents and gave the state the authority to investigate and order fixes, among other things. The state determined that Disneyland employees did not properly load Brandon into the ride, with the smallest child farthest from the cutout entryway and failed to fully lower the lap bar. It also ordered significant safety changes to the ride, including a sensor-equipped guard around the bottom of each car. The investigations concluded that the likely cause was a lap bar that had malfunctioned and Brandon's placement next to an opening in the car. The Roger Rabbit ride was reopened in July 2001, after changes recommended by the state were made, including the addition of bumpers around each car to prevent anything from getting caught underneath. In June 2002, Disney also unveiled safety measures at its theme parks nationally and named its first chief safety officer. Brandon's family reached a settlement with Disney about 17 months after the accident, which did not require Disney to assume the blame. The terms of the settlement were not disclosed, but ensured the youngster would receive medical care for the rest of his life. One must wonder why Disneyland didn't have such preventive bumpers and sensors in place before. Such action would have saved Brandon's life and spared him eight years of agony and pain. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell button to get notified every time we upload a new video that will take you to the hearts of the scenes and mysteries of some of the most terrifying incidents, accidents, disasters, and paranormal events around the world.